Hey t heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to break an entire poor cake apart. And I'm going to be talking about some of the given knowledge about why you may want to do that. And then we're going to be testing whether or not that theory actually holds true in real life. Right, I have in front of me a very special tea, one of our first ever Pua Sheng Pua's that we released, 2016 Monocle Boss. For those of you who have been following the May Leaf journey for a while, you will know this tea. For those of you who are newer to the channel, this is a Gushu Sheng Pua, so a raw Pua made from estimated 500 year old tea trees from Pasha Mountain, and this is spring 2016. And I've been wanting to do this video for a while, but as I said earlier, this involves some testing and so I needed to have a couple of cakes available and so I wanted it to be on a tea that we know very, very well and that we've got you know, a few cakes, quite a few cakes that we can spare to do this uh, A-B testing. So finally it's here. This is five years old. I'm speaking to you from 2021. So this is the right time. I think that if you were gonna repeat these experiments, I would only use cakes that are sort of five plus years old for you to really get a feel for it. So let's talk about some of the given knowledge around uh, the cake uh, process and why pua tea is stored as a cake. So you will always see teas that are intended for long-term storage to be cake pressed. And the theory around it, well, there are quite a few theories and to be honest with you, I'm surprised that it's not been studied more, but the theory that holds the most uh, sway with me is that the cake gives a, a surface area which is smaller. That means that you are getting some oxidation around the outside because the outside, this is a breathable membrane and therefore this is reacting with the oxygen. The tea around the outside is reacting with the oxygen. But inside the cake, you are having a lower oxygen environment, especially if it's nicely uh, pressed. And that lower oxygen environment is going to contribute more to a fermentation process. So you're getting a combination of oxidation and fermentation and all together that makes the aging process. And the theory around breaking an entire cake up is that when you are happy with the age of a cake, when you feel that the, the taste of the tea has reached a really nice point and you are intending to drink that tea in the next sort of one, one and a half, maybe two years, that it's better to break all of the cake up and store it in, in a zersha uh, clay jar or some sort of uh, breathable container. And that supposedly evens out um, all of the, um, the differences between the, the, the different parts of the cake. So the, the bing and the inner area of the cake and the outer area evens out. And some people say that it's sort of, um, breathes new life into it or livens up the tea. And I've always wanted to really test this theory out because it's always been a bit of a, a question mark in my mind. So finally the day is here. This is part one, episode one, because we are gonna be leaving this tea um, once we've broken up for a month in order for us to really sort of assess the difference that it makes. And this is not just with poor tea. I've seen this with white tea cakes as well. Whenever I go to China, they'll have their white tea cakes, but when I sample it, they'll always pull out a bean jar like this. So like a jar like this made out of clay um, and they'll have the broken up cake in there and they'll taste from that cake. So it's not just poor tea, it's also white tea cakes as well. The, 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 the given knowledge is that if you are planning to really enjoy that cake and you, and, and you really love the state that it's in at that po point, break up the whole cake, store it and drink it like that, it'll liven it up and even it all out. But I want to test this out. Right, let's open this up. This is Monocle Boss Pasha. Wow, look how it has aged. Beautiful, beautiful, large leaf. Right, we're going to move this wrapper out of the way because we are going to be breaking all of this up. So I'm going to put this to one side. And I've got a poor pick here. So obviously what we're trying to do is break this all up and try to keep the leaves as whole as possible. But before we start to get into it, I wanna do a taste test in this video. And in order for me to do a taste test, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take some of the outer leaves off. So we're gonna, I'll talk about the reason why I'm doing this 
a little bit later. So I'm just taking the outer leaves off and you can see I'm trying to be careful. I'm gonna take my time. This video is probably gonna have some cuts in it because I really don't wanna rush this. I wanna take my time. So you can see keeping the leaves nice. This is a, a, a stone pressed tea, so it's not machine pressed. So that makes it easier, but you can use the same uh, technique for machine pressed, it's just gonna be a bit harder. Okay, so that is enough. Let me uh, get a scale out and let me put like about four grams in one of these guy ones. Of these outer leaves, very important, because I wanna talk about some of the logic around cake aging. So I'm just gonna put some of this here. That's three and a half. That's four and a half. Let's just take some back. Four on the nose. Okay, so that's four grams. We're gonna leave that to the side, right. Let me just um, start to now dig into this cake. So when you are breaking a cake, you've probably seen other videos uh, about this, and so it's nothing new here, but you're looking to find areas of little resistance. So if you push down and you find that it's hard to get your pick in, then you know move on, don't force it. You wanna try to break as little of these leaves as possible. And once you find a nice, um, easy give, just go in. Give it a little wiggle, but don't do anything more and then move on to the side. Again, find a nice point. And you're gonna go round the entire cake here. Try to keep it relatively in the center of the uh, cake. So in the center of the, the, the thickness of the cake, not too high, not too low because we want to try to split this entire cake in half. And this is very easy, this cake. Um, it's been, as I said, stone pressed, which means uh, the, the leaves are steamed and then put in these, uh, these sort of bags that are shaped and then they put them over stones and somebody stands on the stones and moves around, um, does a little dance on the stones. So it's using body weight to really um, compress the cake, which means it's very, very light. Oh, that part is a bit stiff. I don't wanna go in a bit further, so I'm just gonna um, find another spot. Yeah, that's easier. So if you find any parts of resistance, then just be patient, take your time with this. This should be a, a process that is an enjoyable uh, sort of meditative process. Here we go again. See, that's got resistance. That means that there is a, a whole sort of knot of leaves there that I don't really wanna get into, so I'm just gonna find a part which is easier to get into. And as I said, you wanna sort of go round once you've done that and it'll become simpler and simpler, easier and easier. And we're gonna see if we can get this relatively um, split in half. So it's everything when you're doing a, a breaking of a cake is about a sort of prying motion rather than a cutting motion. So once you're in, you just sort of are doing this sort of wiggle. Everything's about sort of just bending and allowing the leaves to slowly start to untangle a little bit. It's a very satisfying process and you are gonna get, you know, um, a little bit of mess, so make sure you've got a, a tray beneath you and ideally a nice um, clean table. It's good for you to also make sure that you know, you've got clean hands, uh, that you're away from any odors because with this amount of precious leaves, you don't want them soaking up any odors in the room or on your hands. Here we go, we're starting to get there now. Ooh, a little bit resistance there, so I'm gonna just try and find an area around that. There we go, it's easier. Okay, take your time with this. I'm rushing a little bit. It's a sort of, a, it's a lovely process and I should just shut up and let the leaves do their ASMR because it is a lovely sound of the cake opening up. So you can see that I've gone around a few times now. All right, let's see what we can do here. So now we want to see if we can just start to prise this cake apart.
There we go. The bing hole, which is that central area, which is more compressed, that's going to be harder to get into without breaking the leaves um, much. But let's see if we can do this. Here we go. It's starting to come apart now. Okay, so now we've got two halves. Can you see this? We've got the bing hole there, which is, is going to be the hardest part to, to, uh, to take apart. And this is one of the, re one of the reasons why you want to um, uh, break up the leaves, is that if you are uh, breaking the cake as we normally do, just sort of from the outside in, then you're left at the end of um, the uh, at the end of the cake. You're left with just the bing hole, and the bing hole, as I said, because it's more compressed, because that's where the knot of the bag was. That area is going to be harder to break, and so you're going to have more broken leaves. And therefore, the last you know 10 or 15 sessions of this uh, tea cake um, will be. Um, less optimal because of the fact that you're gonna have more broken up bits. So it's better to even it all out. So you've got that broken bing hole, but you can um, add that sort of those broken leaves to the entire uh, cake's worth of sessions. So however many sessions you have out of it, you'll have an even amount of those uh, slightly more broken leaves with uh, the majority being the full leaves. So now that you get to this point, it's just again, this sort of bending prying motion you don't want to snap it. You just want to sort of loosen it up and you'll start to see that it sort of forms these, these edges with lots of leaves sort of um, sticking out. And then you just, you know, go through it again. So sort of prying, bending and pulling motion. Once you get to this part, I like to sort of squeeze it sort of vertically like that or perpendicularly against the, the, uh, the cake. I'm gonna just move this. This is why you need to have a lot of room. Just gonna move this to the side here. Um, so yeah, it's just bending like this, trying to take your time. It's very satisfying because once it starts to loosen up, you feel it start to just crumble in and all of the leaves just sort of come out in a beautiful whole way and you start to see the beautiful nature of all of these whole leaves. And you know, again, if you're, if you're breaking it while you're brewing it, then often you won't see all of this. Now, very important, you can see this area here. This is the inner part of the cake, right? And I want to take out four grams of that inner part of cake. And I'll talk to you a little bit about why I'm doing this in a very short while. So this is the inside of the cake, and I don't want to mix that with the outside of the cake, so I just want this inner cake leaf material. Three point three. Let me get some from here. As you can see, this is a, a messy job. That's why it's very important that you have a very large table area to or you know, fairly large table area in order for you. Bang, on the dot, four grams. Okay, so we're gonna tidy this up a little bit now. And you get the gist. You're gonna have to keep going with this, keep bending, prying, avoid snapping it, avoid rushing, take your time, just slowly untangle the, all of these leaves and make sure you try and keep it on the tray and then you can obviously take the leaves and store it um, as you go. Um, all right, I'm gonna just switch these over. I'm gonna talk about this bing hole here. So the bing hole here, you can see, this is the most tightly compressed part of the cake. So you wanna try to get as much of these uh, outside leaves as possible off by doing the same process. So again, taking your time. But as you get closer to the center, you're gonna have much more resistance. This is very solid. So you are gonna to have to apply more pressure and you will hear a little bit more of this 
of leaves of leaves breaking and that's just uh, inevitable you're not going to be able to get around that but as I said as long as you take your time um, and you try to minimize it as possible the the broken leaves that are going to be coming off this bean hole so you can see here it's a little bit more broken leaf compares to the large leaf here this is going to be mixed up with all of these larger leaves and that means that you're going to have a consistent brewing and tasting experience as you drink through these loose leaves. Right, so what I'm going to do is I will um, continue breaking all of these up and then I'm going to store these in a uh, Zersha clay jar um, which is breathable but if you don't have that then you can put them in um, you could put them in like a Ziploc bag but then leave the Ziploc bag slightly open so it's not completely airtight um, that's possible it's less ideal you you want sort of a, an, a, an overall breathing material but that's possible. Uh, you could put them in like a glass jar, again leaving the lid slightly ajar, um, not a huge amount. I mean, really, especially if you're drinking um, over um, the course of you know uh, a year, it's not going to it's not going to make a huge amount of difference if you sort of close the lid. Uh, but you just want some oxygen circulating, you know fairly often maybe once every couple of months just to keep the uh, oxygen you know replenished in there and this again is theory that we need to sort of test out I would love to in fact you know what I may reserve some of this and put it in an airtight um, container just to test out that theory that's something for future tests um, right so you can see this part of the central being hole that's very very difficult that's really really compressed leaves so I am going to just literally snap those um, and it's a small amount compared to the, uh, the rest of it. Be very, very careful if you start to go in here with a pick. That is a recipe for slipping. So you can do it just sort of very, very light. Don't push hard. Just sort of allow the, um, the leaves to sort of give way. You can see and you start to get these little layers forming. Anyway, you get the idea. Right, I'm going to tidy up all of these beautiful loose leaves i'm going to break it all up i'm going to put them away and then i'll be back to do this tasting Right, here are all of the leaves of a 357 gram cake. You can see how much volume that takes. So I just wanted to say before I put this away, make sure before you start breaking into your cake and opening it all up that you have containers big enough to store them. Don't start getting into it and then finding out that you don't have jars or you don't have um, the right uh, a gear for you to store it. So it's quite a lot and obviously if it's 200 gram cakes, which most of our cakes are these days, then it's going to be about a third less than this, right? I'm gonna go put these away. All right, we're back and I've put the leaves into two containers because I want to do an extra test here, which will probably take a bit longer. So that might be episode three of this uh, little mini series on breaking a cake. Uh, I've put um, half of it, no more than half, about two thirds of it in a uh, Zersha clay jar storage. And the other one I've put in a Ziploc bag, taken all the air out of it so that we're storing it in no oxygen, airtight. It's going to be interesting to test that theory because this is all about testing these theories out. You know, you get lots of knowledge given to you in the course of your tea journey. And it's always important to just see whether or not it matches with your experience. The theory matches your, in your experience. So what we are testing is we are testing whether or not the theory that uh, once a tea has reached a, a nice age for your taste, where you taste it and you think, wow, that's really, really good, that you break it all up and that you sort of um, store it for a month to even it out and to liven it up and you drink through that loose tea and that will give you a much more in, more enjoyable experience than drinking from just breaking off the cake. 
So we're going to be testing that in the next um, episode. But Right now, since we've broken up a cake, I think it's really great to test the difference. As you see, I took leaf from the outside of the cake and leaf from the inside of the cake. Because, as I said, the theory which holds the most sway with me in terms of why cake aged tea uh, ages better in the long term is that you're getting a combination of oxidation which would happen with large surface area that is um, in a breathable membrane and therefore in contact with oxygen. And you are getting some more fermentation, uh, which is brought about through a more low oxygen environment. In other words, the center of the cake. So let's see whether or not the outer leaves taste different from the inner leaves. This is something that I think is a very fascinating thing to do. I'm going to turn this towel over. It's more stable this way round if you're going to brew directly on it. And I have what temperature water here? Oh, 70. So we're going to boost that up. So, I mean, uh, if you've got uh, cakes that you um, have that have been aging for, you know, five plus years, then try this out yourself. Just take a little bit off the edge of the uh, cake. Make sure that you don't go uh, deeper than the first uh, layer of leaves. Um, and then, you know, get into the cake. You can either sort of do what I've just done and break the whole thing up, or just try to sort of open up a little part of the cake and just try to get the inner leaf um, out and see whether or not, when you AB them, you can taste a difference. Now, I have done this test a few times before and I can always taste a difference and it's quite extreme. And it's sort of, um, plays into, again, the question mark about whether or not this idea of breaking up the whole cake is a good one. Because if we notice a difference, is it better for those differences to continue to be um, kept? In other words, for there to be inner leaves and outer leaves, or is it better for everything to be essentially an outer leaf? Right, here we go. We've got 99 degree water here. so. Very quick rinse. This is outer leaves. And inner leaves here. We'll see if we can note a difference on the wet leaf smell. Ah, oh, deep, plummy, antique woods, incense. Um, um, yeah, prunes. Um, but I'm noting a sort of smell that comes from a smell of storage. Uh, what do I mean by that? It's nothing, it's nothing funky and it's nothing um, not very nice, but it feels like a little bit like muted would be the best way for me to describe it. A very, 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 I'm actually very surprised, a very different aroma. Like I would, thought, I would have thought these were completely different teas. Funkier. A little bit more of that um, elephant house funk. Very, very light. And I don't mind that smell, but very, very light. And I know that that will uh, not really show itself in the actual taste of the tea, but I'm getting a little bit more of that fermentation but very, very fruity, very, very rich, very, very bold flavors or aromas hitting my nose, much more intense and concentrated. This has a sort of airy, slightly, um, uh, yeah, muted uh, quality in comparison. Here we go. Just try to do about 10 seconds difference. And we're gonna pour it off immediately. So that's the outer leaf, four grams, and inner leaf, four grams. Color difference of the liquor, I can't really see any perceptible difference there in terms of color. A little bit more even now in smell, 
the elephant house has gone from this, but certainly still more intense. Okay, let's give this a try. Cheers everybody, Monocle Boss, the outer leaves. Thick, soft, moving to um, a physical bite, woodsy. On the cover you saw that uh, uh, flamingo in a library and we, we always got that sort of resinous and uh, antique wood and woodsiness and the leather uh, sofas. I'm picking up a lot of those more sort of library notes. And I am getting a ton of other things like creaminess and, and, um, and dried fruits, a little bit of dried currants, raisins and prunes. Um, very, very nice, extremely enjoyable. Um, and uh, but yeah, a, a little bite and a little uh, grip, more than I would expect from an aged tea that's, you know, five years old. It's just remarkable, the difference. Slightly thicker, much softer, much more velvety, uh, much more lubricating, much more oily, much more dried fruits, dialed down tremendously in terms of the woodiness and the uh, library notes and the, the leather bound books. Again, I would have thought these were different teas. Oh, so much more of the fruits and less of the woodsiness and the texture is so much softer and so much thicker. And I would prefer this tea over this tea. And so it's very, very clear to me that the transformation of the leaves over the years is different depending upon where the leaves are in the cake. The outer leaves are gonna have a different set of processes that are happening. There's gonna be more potential for release or evaporation of some of the aromatics, but more than that, you're getting more of an oxidized taste to it. It's, it's moving more into that um, briskness that comes from a black tea, an oxidized tea. Please don't get me wrong, it is a delicious, delicious tea and I'd be very, very happy drinking it, but it tastes like it uh, is less aged and it tastes um, a little bit more punchy and astringent. much thicker, much softer, much more gentle, and much fruitier and sweeter as well. And yes, I would prefer this uh, tea over this one, but probably the best combination is the mix between the two. So this very, very simple, very, very easy to do. You don't have to have lots of cakes to do it, just one cake. As long as it's aged for sort of five plus years, you can do this experiment. Um, you can see there looks like a difference in the color of the leaves, but that may be just the leaves that I picked. Do this experiment yourself, and I think you will find, of course, everyone's gonna have a different experience, but I think you will find the same ballpark reaction. Woodsier, more stringent, more um, like reminiscent of some more of the, the black tea notes in uh, this outer leaf and fruitier, bit funkier, smoother, sweeter, softer, thicker in the inner leaf material. And that gives a tick to why everyone says cake aging is better than loose leaf aging if you are, you know, five plus years. So, you know, we uh, sell young goose shoe, but that is designed, that loose leaf is designed to be drunk fresh. But if you are planning to age for the long term, then cake aged is always considered to be preferable and you can understand why when you do this AB tasting. Which makes you ask the question, it makes me ask the question, the given theory that 
it's good for you to break up the cake when you're happy with it and that sort of livens the tea up and it evens it all out. That may be the case, but is it actually going to provide a better experience than leaving the tea in a cake form with these dual processes happening? That's the subject of the next video. So that's what I really want to test out. Is breaking up a cake logical? And does it provide for a better drinking experience than if you are having a session directly by breaking up the cake at the time of the session? And because I've got more cakes of Monocle Boss, I can do that A, B. One more sip of this. It's, it's delicious, it's moving sweeter getting a, um, this um, like dried green raisins, sultanas, but distinctly edgy. I don't want to say coarse because that sounds negative, but edgier, more physical, a little bit more bite. It's so different. You, you swallow and you don't get that bite. It's soft, it's smooth, which is best. Some people may prefer this one, some people may prefer this one, some people, probably me included, would like a combination of both. So that's the subject of the next video. We're gonna be testing out all of the different variations from a whole cake to a slightly broken cake to the fully broken cake. Join us for that one and we'll see whether or not all of these theories actually make sense in practice. That's it, tea heads. Check out our other videos, taste our teas wherever you are in the world by browsing mayleaf.com and come visit us if you're ever in London. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags, keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea.